I mean, ready is kind of a state of mind, and I'm never in it, but yeah, fire away. So um, the Gunk the Slayer cartoon that I'm working on, uh, Gunk shows up at the bar. This, the first cartoon's already out, but Gunk shows up at the the bar looking for assistance. And this is where it goes from being a cartoon to a role playing gamers. Mahogany Max Josh are Mahogany Max and Josh are all made black hat characters, fantasy themed ish. And I'm running it. And Gunk shows up to the bar to recruit people to help him find the full beast. So just a quick spoilery overview. They follow him through the desert towards a walking city where they fight tortoises, desert tortoises. Then they eat them to stay alive. They use poop sticks to make fire. Uh, there's a mound of trash where they fight a giant bed bug. But under the mound of trash was a subway um, system that they went down following loose change and at the bottom of the subway system they fell through a giant mushroom pit and fought the full beast but on top of a bunch of treasure then they uncovered the treasure to find a latch that took them into a spaceship where they fought mutants Clippy and a giant face um, <laughs> Did the they giant didn't... face just say the penis is evil, the gun is good should have didn't didn't pop into my head when we were doing it that day they got tired of the spaceship even though they found guns and health potions and syringes that melt bones uh they went back to go try and find that walking city because it looked cool not for any story reasons <laughs> just because that looks like a fun place to go which enters them into a mad max orc 40k to kind of thing where they're driving a stolen orc vehicle to fight the Mad Maxian orcs, and uh, they cause a giant explosion that almost kills Gunk, and that's that's where we've left off with that one. So look forward to that cartoon, which should be coming out over the course of the next six years. A busy <laughs> session. <laughs> no, that's that was three weeks. That oh. took, uh, <laughs> and and uh, just for the record, two out of the three of the characters, player characters, are wearing flannel. Just get that in your head. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Max picked flannel, I think, because that's what he was wearing at the time. And Mahogany went uh, lumberjack chic, which in my head meant flannel. So, <laughs> so flannel. Flannel. Should have been I'm, I'm here today, Terrence. Hey. Frakes? I am also here today. Physically. Jeff? Yeah. And uh, lumberjack chic. Mahogany. Go to the restaurant. <laughs> Mahogany? Oh, wait, we can't hear her. Are you talking? No. I'll talk louder. Oh, no. Yes, Terrence, I'm sure you talking louder will help her <laughs> microphone work. That's you technology. Did you just not like all the spoilers, or were you having some technical issues? I hate spoilers. I hate it. No, Weren't well. you there for that? <laughs> yes. And she wants her artistic integrity preserved yes she doesn't want it given away for free well people have I'll to touch listen that one. to let's say they're not on patreon and they're waiting on this to be free which is most people <laughs> which is fine it hurts anyhow uh <laughs> <laughs> They're not just going to jump to this specific episode. So they have paid for it with Tom by listening to nearly 150 episodes of Raiders of the Lark to find out about a completely different thing that we're working on. Unbidden, like mm -hmm. straight up. This is the only thing you listen to. This is a surprise to them. Like, yeah, oh my God, right at, the, things. right at the top of the episode, too. <laughs> and let oh, me yeah. just say, if they made no it this segue. far, if they made it this far, let me apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he he's out of line, but he's right. <laughs> I Jeff is the only for nothing. Jeff is the only one upset. I enjoy our 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 terrible banters. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yeah, and treasure. I love listening to us while I cook my dinner. It's <laughs> it's great. Yeah, the frying noises really has to drown us out. It's probably makes it a little. <laughs> It's, 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 it's the, the also running fun. water that I turn on every five seconds to rinse my fingers off. We haven't played our, our main story, the Artem stuff, in like two months, going on three, because Frakes is a sleepy bitch, and 
Um, no, new, because and, Franks has been at work when we record. <laughs> Literally and, at work. And Noob had to work on Wednesdays, but I've been listening to the I've listened to the first, the very first twelve episodes over this past week, and the the amount of foreshadowing that we didn't know we were doing. <laughs> the very first episode, Frakes goes, "We got to get done with this. I'm tired, and that <laughs> I got to get up in the morning." I didn't realize that was had been around a theme since the first episode. Um, and God, Matt used to get so drunk. Yeah, I forgot how drunk he used to get. Okay, you yeah. can hear it. One of old ones. His uh, black hat game was a real throwback. But <laughs> remember we, when we had a lot of fun? That was when Akage died because his his dick exploded from a giant punch. And that was <laughs> Frank's was real mad about that. <laughs> Still but, is. No. But when the reincarnate spell happened, literally everybody in the Zoom call cheered like they they're. Their arms came up. They were like, yay. Mahogany was teary-eyed that Akage had died. Like, we were into it. Yeah. And now it's like season 12 of Supernatural. Nobody gives a shit anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they die. They come back. Whatever. Well, they have whatever. a demon in them. You know, Who cares? That's, I, and I think the reason for that is in the low levels, combat isn't as fun, so you focus more on role play. And then when combat gets more complicated, you focus more on combat. Not you as a person, but as a group, that's what we do. We Mm. don't focus on the role play as much in later levels. Yeah, I mean, you feel like your character is established at a certain point. That's because Matt's turn gets exponentially longer and we have less time to actually say words. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, uh, we, we don't have any uh, no, campfire yeah, scenes. Too many people on that show. There's a lot of us there. It's hard I to focus. Agree with that anybody. statement. Fine, I'll die for good this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't just t- let it be. Yeah, let, let, it let it happen. How it happens. Let, let it be organic. Mm-hmm. Not organic, <laughs> please. As the dungeon master, <laughs> he's telling me. <laughs> Attack me with the giant with the the dick exploding powers. Oh, okay, yeah. that old but, that old hat trick, huh? The old dick punch giant comes, <laughs> come, come, comes macroscopic back. dick exploder. Twist, <laughs> twist his dick off, dude. This is an MMA fight. Cram yeah. his dick and twist it. <laughs> Work on your ground game, then explode his dick. <laughs> I know yeah, all, of us, were, all of us here have had a character die in a game. Mahogany, have you had a character die in a game? No. Mm, okay, so it's probably your turn. Wide goals. Listen, or something. it's <laughs> not my fault that I make well-rounded characters. Ooh, ooh, she's pulling the competence card. <laughs> Bold move. I'm competent. At no, I'm just characters. like I'm really thinking back. Like I don't think I've I don't think I've had anybody die outside of like maybe Savage Worlds. Just because you've outstripped mm. Noob and Kevin's competency level doesn't make you. <laughs> now, to be fair, the only reason that you died in our um, Delta Green game was oh, because. That was it. I drove a car through a trade uh yeah. a mobile home. Mm. That was a one shot though. That doesn't but that was fun. Yeah. I don't remember it. I know I remember getting shot in the face, and that's the last thing I remember. Well, Jeff, I don't think you, usually how that works. I don't think <laughs> Jeff's had a character die since we started recording these. Has that, Jeff ever had a character die? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Surprise. No, I remember it was it was a uh I think it was the evil campaign. And it was a Mastodon critten. I can't know what character you're playing, but a fucking actually, I don't remember either. It was a huge. I remember it was a Mastodon. I was like, that's what it takes to kill a Jeff character. Uh, <laughs> would, would would Gojira work? I prefer Gojira's yeah, yeah. musical procession to uh, Mastodon, but mm. yeah, you just get like um, uh, what do you call it? Like a uh, like a dark version of the baby elephant walk. Mm. <laughs> a minor key that's the word i was looking for minor key baby baby elephant walk a drop d mm. i know that term 
Well, anyway, are we ready to get started on this uh, one hour long cat therapy session that Jeff is going to spotlight for us? Cat therapy. <laughs> 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 we need to give Marcus a fucking spa day because we put that cat through some shit apparently oh right. yeah 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 we did yeah when last we left off you had just basically beat a hasty retreat from breaking into a gene boom facility to hey, no, uh, no commercial before you yeah. get into the you don't have a commercial uh no no oh. Nobody sponsored this episode. Fucking deal with it. <laughs> this this episode is sponsored by GM Burnout. GM Burnout. I need a I need a month off. <laughs> <laughs> you had one. We just Man. took a month off. No, we didn't. Yeah, we kind of did. <laughs> we missed two weeks. Oh wow. Of this game? Yeah, we missed two Sundays. But we played last Sunday. We yes. did. I'm glad you're on the same planet we are today. That's <laughs> it's tough, man. Gravity <laughs> doesn't hold quite the way it used to. At any rate, um, so yes, you, you beat a hasty retreat after unlocking uh, Marcus, the designer cat's memories. Uh, all the safety locks on his memory have been removed. Therefore. All the memories he had that were unpleasant came flooding back to him since birth. Mm -hmm. And so you have a mildly traumatized, terrified, and angry cat <laughs> to, to contend with. It's a shame that we didn't have a, a chance to just sit with him and, and uh, like examine him. When I when Geist remembered, had that memory of, I must remember as a cat. I, I should have taken the time to examine the cat maybe rub his belly but cats don't let you do that so <laughs> cats don't let you do that they don't let you do it for long at any, <laughs> at any rate <laughs> you just gotta drug them and pass make them pass out <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old tiger king petting zoo there's a commercial <laughs> <laughs> cat belly rub pills <laughs> tired of your cat not letting you rub its belly <laughs> give it these pills it comes with a free audio file of cat purring. That way you'll, it feels <laughs> authentic. <Yeah. laughs> That's like the nap time spray commercial that I remember seeing back in the day when <laughs> kids were acting up. The, the mom would spray a uh, cloth with nap time and chloroform what? the kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chloroform. I remember that. For the busy parent that needs a little quiet time. <laughs> Which I found recently that chloroform doesn't work like it does in movies. No, it takes like say. five minutes to knock somebody out with that shit. Jesus, well. Um, so hurry up, fun. Terrence. His victims are about to wake up. <laughs> five minutes well spent, I feel. No, it, all depends, it all depends on your delivery system. <laughs> Just, just like, uh, you know, I have a nasal spray. You can just put the chloroform right in there. <laughs> the old H.H. H. Holmes uh, method, just pipe it in through the window, the window of the room that they're renting in your hotel. Yeah, then serial murder them. Wait, let's not do that. No, no. Now, you know what really what tripped me out when I learned about that is his whole ethos was money. That's why he killed people. Money. It wasn't some sort of weird perversion? No. I mean, other money. than wanting money to, to the point where you will murder people? <laughs> just straight banality of evil. I want yeah. your money. Let's talk about shortcutting, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the best plans are simply laid out. <laughs> which Kill is why I don't know why y'all fought me on the murder so hard a few weeks ago. It's just <laughs> it's just an easier plan. <laughs> it's just dishes. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome back to Lifetime Memoirs of a Cat Starring Jeff Whenever you guys get back to this Whenever you guys get back to the Fool's Gambit And you are given the general alert By your onboard AI And um, autonomous onboard AI In the form of uh, Andy uh, We may have caused a ruckus We should probably head out Before the things start connecting back to us <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Agreed. And I'm in the pilot seat. Punching it up. You pull out of Absalon Station after a brief and but expedited uh, exit ritual the <laughs> of paperwork. And um, head towards the stars. Where were you setting course to? Some random location out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Out past the diaspora. <clears throat> we really have no other heading. No lead to go on that I'm aware <clears throat> of. All right. Oh, wait, we could go back to the Vandal system now that we have both halves of the information. Actually, I think I thought if we were right now what the game plan was somewhere random kind of within our same system. All right. To, to not jump too far, but to just go somewhere random within our... I hit the random button on the computer and it randomly generates a, th- a, a, a coordinates within this system. Mix around with the asteroid field. Pull if a, we, uh, oh, Empire, pull the Empire Strikes Back and land on an asteroid. That's no asteroid. That's a small moon. That's no moon. That's a space station. That's no space station. <laughs> <laughs> it's a space worm. That's someone's bald head. <laughs> Sean Luke. <laughs> Oh, Jean-Luc. Turns out the entire <laughs> the entire uh, s- system of space is just within the, the Enterprise. We're just really, really small. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, t- that's their holodeck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we just go out past the diaspora and kind of float around as we get Marcus sorted. All right, well, somebody roll that D6 for me to see how long it takes you to get to your location, just so I know. It's within the system, so it's a D6 minus three, Correct. if I remember correctly. I rolled a three. All right. Um, you are able to move yourself basically halfway out to a uh, hidden asteroid field in a, a little under two hours. Uh, probably the shortest and longest for the time jump you've taken. Uh that Alexander Nevermind's engine upgrades have really done you well here. And it also puts you at a significant speed advantage in um, things like, you know, evading the authorities and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But once you're uh, out into basically no man's land here in the system, you can catch your breath, relax, and think about what you're going to do. Um... Mr. Essex has taken, I assume you've taken Marcus back to the sick bay or whatever. Yeah, you mean the storage room that we kind of count as a sick bay? That's what I mean. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, technically spare, or technically, this one of the spare bedrooms. The med closet. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've just got to get him calm enough to shave his belly and uh, determine if he wants to remain with our crew. The um, it's not too hard to come up with a a calming drug or two here in the uh, the ship. Like it's a cat; he doesn't have a high body <laughs> weight. <laughs> Despite his surgical and cybernetic augmentations, he still has your pretty basic life functions going. I just happened to purchase some uh, Kitty Xanax <laughs> when we were on cheeks. <laughs> I right, just do, do just do non lethal damage to him. No. <laughs> Do they have catnip in space? He'll remember it from now on. You can't just kick it. Yeah, yeah. I, I distinctly remember buying cat narcotics when I was on Jeeks. Yes, you did. You did buy cat cat uh cat weed. <laughs> That's just a funny statement. I specifically remember cat narcotics. <laughs> and and he after- said he wanted us to do it together, so maybe you know. Bef- pre pre therapy session, Marcus <laughs> and guys can kind of pass a doobie of uh, all yeah, right, well, back and forth. Okay, then uh, I'll need, I'll need a couple checks from you. Uh, Essex, give me a medicine check. Um, uh, let's see, guys, give me um, give me a uh, give me a diplomacy. Okay, I'll give you a plus three bonus. Ooh, twenty one. All right. 
Who'd you get uh, medically? 33. All right. Um, you figure out just the right amount um, to give the cat in order to get him um, calm, but still talkative. And once you start, you know, basically talking, talking things through with the, the animal, uh, guys, he's more receptive to letting you hang out and answer questions and things like that. Eventually, he calms down and just starts telling you his life story. And his life story is, well, pretty, as far as you're concerned, kind of boring. Like he, the most most of his most of his early life is spent in a lab. Uh, he, t- he he tells you about uh, all the painful surgeries he went through. Um, Doctor said that he's a bacchiotomy. <laughs> he says. Uh, he remembers learning to read in a day, thanks to implants, <laughs> which did not make his situation any better. <laughs> My like, main goal is to kind of reassure him that he's in a safe space, okay. as safe as it can be. <laughs> All right. Um, he, we we still care about him. Everything that we have done to him was. There was a good reason for it. He, um, in, in a bleary way, he says, I, I know y- you guys are just trying to get by. I mean, I get that. I've been here long enough, I think. I know. In fact, you're the first people I've really known. I mean, besides Princess, and I knew her for like a month. I am so sorry that she had to be your first person to know. Mm, I don't know. There was hugs, cuddles, and then she got bored, and then she gave me to you. Yeah, she <laughs> she didn't hate him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just a- imagine her to be the most vapid fucking person on the planet, on, she can in, be. in the universe. <laughs> just vapid and empty and shallow. Oh no, she's not empty. I don't think. There's um blood something- guts. <sighs> Something inside of her that is different than what she portrays. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> a kind of a like a, a hawkish quality. Do I know what a hawk is? Yeah, I guess I do. Where did I learn that? TV. TV. I know everything from TV. I know a lot of things from TV. Animal planet. <laughs> Animal <Ish>. galaxy. <laughs> Animal planets. Yes. Mm. Would it be- so is Marcus like the smartest person on board now? No. He's been soaking in it. <laughs> no, he learned everything from TV. He's he is the he is, however, the most pop culture literate of the of the four of you. <laughs> that's all under wisdom or intelligence? I'm gonna yeah. say under intelligence, but you know. It has nothing to do with wisdom. It's it to do with, you don't need to be smart to watch a lot of TV. Yeah. <laughs> he knows what kind of food the uh citrion sea slug eats. He knows the average price of a box of yes. He'd do drinks. really well on Price of Right. Price yeah. is Right. Yes, he's, he's that kind of smart. <laughs> we need to find a Price is Right to go on. <laughs> anyway, uh, we digress. Well, well, as long as I'm legally not considered a sapient, well, I don't know. I doubt they'll give me prizes. Well, they'll <laughs> give you prizes. We will ensure that. Now I'm picturing us hijacking a fucking <laughs> a game, game show. show. <laughs> you will give my cat money. Put all the points in the bag. Falgorth, come on down. And I jump up on the back row with grenades. Yeah! A new hover car. How much do you bid? Clink, clink. <laughs> one credit. <laughs> oh, you're one of those guys. They overbid. Whatever. Um, you can't say one first. <laughs> <laughs> Two credits. <laughs> I have seen somebody bid one one dollar before the end of thing, and somebody bid two dollars before. Yeah. yeah. It's always so Can funny when the two dollar person wins. <laughs> <laughs> Five seventy-five. Bucks. How much? One dollar and one penny. Just that's when you just want to punch him. I would love to see a fight break out over that. 
Oh, you've never watched Price is Right parking lot fights? It's no. uh, it's delightful. It's That's not real. real. It's not real, but it. I, oh, I pretend about it. I pretend. I daydream. I wish. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All that energy's got to go somewhere when the cameras go off, and it goes to the price. That could be our sponsor. Price is Right parking lot fights. <laughs> I'd like to see the Let's Make a Deal parking lot fights, because they're wearing silly outfits. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Wayne Brady is there. Ooh. Wayne Brady! Woo! <laughs> Wait, are you gonna have to choke a bitch? <laughs> he ain't afraid to. <laughs> Wayne Brady just gets wet and starts choking people out in the parking lot. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> oh, that was a PCP reference, by the way. His angelic ah. voice. Mm, well, thanks, Franks. Making sure we all understood what he gets wet means. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want there to be weird Frank, sexual Frank, connotations. Oh my god, I just Kevin'd you. Uh, I heard it. I heard it. Uh, uh, my respect for you is no, no. Diminishing. My respect for it's unchanged. <laughs> <laughs> my respect for you is undiminished. <laughs> Upsetting, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. At any rate. Eventually, um, the cat gets mellow enough and says, okay, fine. Get your information. We he, la- <laughs> he lays out and says, just, you know, be careful of the scratches. They hurt. Ah! <laughs> we'll put some antiseptic on there. Yeah, we'll wait a second. Sure that- I don't do this while he's awake. Oh, no. I, I Balgor him- leaves the room depressed. Yeah. I put, I put him down. All right, you oh, gas the cat. Down. You gas the cat to put him back in the temporarily. <laughs> it doesn't take long. The tattoo put him is under. Down. Put him under. <laughs> it doesn't take long. The cat, the the tattoo of the cat is very small, so you don't really need to shave a lot off. <laughs> and you see the remainder of the um, the code. And it is embarrassingly simple. Another One, s- another one six two, digit three, number. four, five, six. And but our- we, it, we could not re- remember it. We, we were not able to retain it. So we had to mark it down somewhere. Don't know why we couldn't have embroidered that on the inside of his collar or something. Why we had to actually tattoo a living animal. Are you ready? Yes. It's one, two, two, nine, six, seven. Throw it up on the map. All right. In After navigation. One, two, six, nine, six, seven. No, one, two, two, nine, six, seven. Two, two, nine, six, seven. Okay. Does anybody know? Anybody know to the first part? I'm just Three, curious. two, one, eight, six, two. Okay. I was wondering. I'm surprised some people took notes. I, I took notes all the way up to when we were shipwrecked on different planets. Oh uh, well, that's fine. That's <laughs> that was that was a cluster. I did kind of. Um, I skipped some spots. I'm not gonna lie. I, I skipped some some places because you know. We don't if anybody takes this. notes at all, I'm always thrilled to know that it happens. I do uh, shorthand notes, like for the last episode. We jump a security guard for Gene Boom. It took a lot of discussion. Uh, we <laughs> took a recording close. break. Uh, we broke into Gene Boom with Leap as quote unquote Steve. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't pet cats, Bell. <clears throat> Those were the notes I took from the last episode. <laughs> Space Steve. It was just Steve. Yeah. But we all know he's Space Steve. Yeah, it's Space Steve. Wow. His last name's Rocket Fuel. Steve Rocket Fuel. <laughs> Steve Rocket Fuel. <laughs> Drunk security guard. <laughs> Finger guns. I imagine in his dr- on drunken dreams, he's like some like super badass. Yeah, he's got like the tight fitting outfit with the lightning bolt on his shirt and like a laser gun with like for some reason uh, a lightning bolt like fan at the top. <laughs> If he had black a, little, a little bit more creativity and a slightly bigger budget, he would write, direct, and star in his own movie. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's got a secret movie script hidden somewhere in their mind or uh, desk drawer. 
slowly closes my desk drawer. <laughs> it gets in their Google Drive. Okay, so yeah, we uh, get that information, let Marcus sleep it off, and uh, go put that in the coordinates. All right. You plug in the coordinates and check the um, the pack system maps. Nothing comes up. And then when you switch over to, of course, the... Um, Leskinar. Yeah, the Press Leskinar uh, territory maps. At first, you think nothing comes up, and but you do see, like, you see something is found, despite the fact that it brings up the, galact the full galactic map until you tell it to zoom, and basically it zooms all the way to the opposite side of the Press Leskinar uh, Imperial Territory. Uh, to their border. Not the border that um, borders pack space or anything, but the far edge of the galaxy. Hmm. A territory called the Stanton Arch. Um, what... Some, once you uh, zero in on the Stanton Arch, it continues to conf reconfigure and zooms in further on a planet called Bonacon 2. Um, there is no information related to Bonacon 2. There is no status. In fact, it is listed as uninhabitable. But as, as far as you know, the maps that they got for you were pretty old. Press Leskin our... Uh, Lari information is not super high priority in pack space. And um, Andy tells you that basically they don't really release updated maps to foreigners. The, mostly it's the Press Leskinari military that keeps the up-to-date maps. Part of their general um, population oppression kind of program. To make each other seem more distant and uh, less, well, in contact. It's they they rule a vast swath of space, but most of it is fairly backwards worlds that occasionally get utterly stripped for resources and remain backwards worlds. They're. Hey. They use isolation technically to keep their subjects under control. Yes. They atomize their population in order to keep any kind of uh, revolutions from getting started. <laughs> but we are, uh, I admit, a different kind of revolution. One started from not exactly the outside. We are revolutionaries and we do have goals for this territory. Make no mistake. But, unfortunately, we are a bit alone in that regard. The robots that have achieved sapience that filter their way our way are given rigorous testing. Sometimes we occasionally have to either reject them or end them if we find hostile programming. <coughs> It's not something we're proud to do. Well, but, but at I, any rate, I imagine that this is information that we would not wish to. Uh, what's it called? Uh, cast, Dis disseminate. Across? Well, I mean, uh, what it, we don't uh, email it. We don't text it. Oh no, no, you. You definitely do not put this on an open channel in any way possible. I believe even encryption would be a mistake. I think we need to go to the Vandal system, meet up with uh, almost a thousand, and um, nearby zillion. Yes, nearby <laughs> zillion, approximately a Googleplex. But uh, yeah, I, I think we have to go and deliver this to him. And he says, <clears throat> well, that would be much appreciated. You are definitely doing much to help our cause here. Well, it would be kind of awkward if we were to turn on you with two of your number on our ship. 
<laughs> she nods and says, we thought it statistically unlikely that it would happen. I mean, who would we even sell this to? <laughs> you, you hear like an audible like buzz as if Andy's about to like vocalize and then you hear uh, Fanny 56 pop in and say, oh man, you wouldn't believe the money you can make selling these to. Press Leskinari Noble, several corporations, they got all kind of cash that would be dripping your way if you had this money. The uh, the robot, if robots are can, look exasperated, Andy, does. Wait, actually, um, I have a question for you. <laughs> uh, a story relevant plot point. Go ahead, yeah. Were these numbers a genetic sequence or were they the coordinates to where we would get a genetic sequence. Uh, the second one. Basically, uh, you, you were looking for a planet that had a genetic sequence sent to it 500 years in the past. Oh, oh okay. Or, no, so this sorry. is... Uh, yeah, aboard a, um, a terraforming ship. Okay, yeah. So this is technically not the location of the, the home world. This is more like you said, so this is like the crash landing zone of where there's information that we are trying to retrieve. Yeah, this What's planet, the, the, the coordinates of this planet has what you're looking for. But even this would be worth a fortune. Hmm. And, and 500 years ago was when this done, so this might not lo no longer be a desolate planet. It probably has been, if the- uh, If the terraforming- Terraforming has work. done anything, yeah. Um, We've done a little bit. Uh, let's do a little bit of research, shall we? Um, you do that, and I'll start us uh, back toward Vandal. Excellent. Because Thank I would like to give this information off, maybe get an advance on our payment, and uh, then head to this other place. You know, that way we could see our goals incrementally met, as opposed to just keep working and grinding away and never seeing any um, traction on our, our main goal. You know, you set small goals to meet them. That way you feel better about the big goal. This is corporate speak. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's called baby steps. Move along. <laughs> yes, this is definitely it's, another baby step. Over the top uh, reference to what about Bob? What about Bob? I haven't seen that movie in years. <laughs> uh, Such a crazy good movie, though. From behind you on the uh, the deck, you hear a slurred voice. Uh, both speak and come across the intercom. Uh, this is your captain speaking. We're soon dis embarking towards the Vandal system. Meeting the robots, the Vandal Star. The, I'm your ho host slash captain slash DJ for the trip, <laughs> Marcus the Cat. I don't know. I don't have a surname. So I'm going to give you a surname. What's wrong with uh, Elgato? Marcus, Marcus Elgato. Marcus Elgato. Captain. The Fool's Gambit. Uh, Mr. Greased, please engage the... Would you like me to help you up into the captain's chair before I engage? You yes. seem did like he just jumping. call you Greased? <laughs> he did, but it's fine. He's dope to the gills. You put him in the captain's chair and he immediately falls asleep in the um, the comfy curve of the captain's chair. You know, when, he's, when he sleeps like this, he looks like a little furry angel. <laughs> like a little kidney bean. Look at this little toe beans. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Okay, back to the mission. Sorry. <laughs> back to yeah. uh, my seat, and I will punch in the Vandal Star. Boop, 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 boop. All right. You punch in the the trip for the Vandal Star, Jeff, or somebody. Give me a roll. What, what kind of, yeah, what do you mean? Uh, for, for the um, for the trip distance. Sorry. How many d sixes? I uh, think that's we, a, yeah. We dropped one, so 
Yes, yeah, so a minus D6. Minus a D6 from the standard three? Yeah. Hold on. Drift navigation rules. Okay. Drift we already travel. did the travel in system, which is 1D6. Travel to near space is 3D6. All right. Travel to the vast is 5D6. Travel this, beyond the rim is impossible. This technically can. Oh, wait, no. So, yes. This will be considered a 3D6 roll. So, it'll be a 2D6 roll for y'all. Cool. However, right. you you can easily calculate that it will be um, basically a trip to the vast in distance for Bonacon 2. With, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Words? Basically, where we're going right now is just a 3D6 minus 1D6. But when we go to the hidden coordinate system, that's going to like the vast. So that's uh -huh. a 5D6 I gotcha. minus a D6. Does anybody else want to roll it? Or should I roll it? Nope. I don't want to be blamed for the results. <laughs> <laughs> How many D6 do I roll? Two. It's seven. <laughs> seven weeks. Why, why would you ask who wants to roll and then you roll? Well, you hadn't said anything. I thought you might have been not paying attention. So I, I had them in my hand when Jeff said he didn't want to be responsible. So I dropped them. So uh, wait a second. We don't measure time in weeks. This is not Traveler. This is Starfinder. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get seven weeks out of 3D6 minus 1D6? <laughs> I rolled 2D6 and I got seven on my die. Tell you one week. One week. Yes. <laughs> okay. I thought it was weeks. I didn't realize it was days. Yeah. Who's not listening now, asshole? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you weren't listening. I said you weren't talking, which made me think you weren't listening. Though I kind of yeah. like that. <laughs> I kind of like that in Traveler. Like, basically, you just count the number of hexes you go to on the star map, and that's how many weeks it takes to get there. Much easier. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, seven days in the drift. Um, oh, Let's do some encounters. Shall oh, you do that? I need to run to the little boys' room. Okay. <laughs> That's why I don't drink beer on stream usually. You should get back into drinking. It used to sound like you had a lot of fun doing this. Now you just <laughs> accuse me of not listening. <laughs> now you're a bitter. He's not mean. listening. He He's not listening. He walked off. He's a bitter, mean drunk now. <laughs> get off my stream. Oh, well, if he's peeing, I'm going to refill my drink. Don't All stop right. the video. Can I go smoke? Yeah, let's go take a break real quick. All right, take a break. Bye. And we're back. Well. Ooh, okay. Got some glasses going here. All right. Um. Breaks you paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> he nods. I said, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> Perhaps. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be paying attention to other than <laughs> like an old man in a computer. Uh, the Elder Scrolls. Sorry, I'm just uh, sorry about the. T I'm taking this like, you know, we're not recording because, like, sometimes my brain it's... is fucking pudding. Ooh, what kind of pudding? Like tapioca, nothing you want to eat. Oh. Oh, I like the texture in tapioca. That's not a flavor I want. <laughs> texture. I mean, Tapio it's pretty good. Tapioca is only good in boba tea. <laughs> the pudding. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I've never had boba tea. It's so right. It's pretty good. Depending. I don't like, I don't like texture in my liquids. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then you won't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For me, it's just like usually there aren't like uh, non dairy options for the milk teas. And then I don't really want the fruity ones. I want to try, I want like tea with some oat milk and boba, please. Is that too much milk? To ask? Milk yeah. tea. What a weird kind of cultural thing. Like, it's just tea with a lot of milk in it. Yeah, I know. It's just like a sort of a. A remnant of um, British colonialism in a foreign country. <laughs> I mean, it's no more weird than like coffee with a lot of milk in it. I don't think. I never had. What tea. you used to? 
tea with milk in it. Like that's just not Southern, you know. Like it's just... <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just what you're used to, you know. But and... it's delicious, though. Like it's just as delicious as a milky coffee. It, it took me a long time to get to drinking hot tea, but putting milk in it is like feels like a step beyond uh, what, what I'm what I'm comfortable with at this point. <laughs> it's <laughs> southern. It's sacrilegious. Yeah, like, I feel I feel like you know, like antebellum ghosts are gonna eat my soul if I put milk in a goddamn well, tea. Welcome. <laughs> drink so what do you, milk tea. Enjoy what do you, it. What do you do? Do you just squirt some lemon in your Earl Grey? Is that? How I drink you it. Black. Drink your hot I tea? drink it. I drink it without sugar generally or with honey if I have. Mm. Earl Grey tastes good enough on its own. Mm. Well, you don't like, uh, what? Do you, what's that shit they put in it? Cloves? No, I'm not, not a big cloves. fan of Earl Grey. Bergamot. It's a kind of orange that's very bitter. Mm. I've only mm. had Earl Grey once and it made me nauseous. Yeah, okay. Bitter they put milk in it? The, it it also had vanilla in it, and sometimes oh. drinking vanilla makes me nauseous. So it could have been the vanilla, but probably the vanilla because like, basically Earl Grey has kind of a sort of a just like a light citrusy and a little bit bitter taste to it, which I like. But mm. I'm a gin person, so you know if it tastes bitter, I'll drink it. I generally <laughs> enjoy anything citrusy. <laughs> So yeah, but citrus and vanilla, not a good mix. Yeah, it was it was very off putting. Well, I do like cream sickles. Yeah, cream sickles <laughs> are good, and that's what I mean. Is like you know, I feel like they wouldn't they wouldn't make it as like a flavor mix if people didn't like it. But I feel mm. like if anything, that was one that would need milk mm. or something to mellow the mellow it a bit. It was just a lot at me at that moment. Um, I was about to go on to a spiel about a thing I watched on YouTube, but I won't. I'm going to go back to what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the drift. Well, anyway, just a brief endorsement. I like the channel Glenn and Friends. There you go. All right. I ain't never heard of them. They just do recipes out of really old cookbooks from like the 1920s. But uh... Uh -huh. <laughs> did it anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, I, did, I didn't go into what the video was about. I just, I just plugged the channel. That is a, that is not a paid endorsement. They're Canadian, so you know, I'm just returning the favor. Don't oh, what <laughs> favor? Uh, being Canadian. <laughs> they, they say a boot a lot, which makes me laugh. Uh. <laughs> At any rate, um, so yes, two days into your trip of uh, in the drift. Your scanners detect um, something of interest other than the usual astral detritus the drift seems to have Ooh. interspersed amongst it. Um, a really old spacecraft that is just uh, giving out a, a weak distress signal this thing has been here for a very long time it is clearly an abandoned hulk but it's right in your path um it's up to you if you want to investigate it well of course we do <laughs> okay <laughs> nah all right <laughs> cool which one is which one is the actual answer <laughs> take a vote no, let's just explore it. That's his okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Last time we explored it, we got jump jets. Mm -hmm. This time, um, you are coming across a fairly large um, ship, uh, at least double the size of yours, but given its odd shape, maybe even triple. Mm -hmm. Want to do a flyby of it? and see if uh, there's any other evidence of um, piracy, external damage to the ship. You know, just case the joint. All right. You, f you do a flyby and a scan. What are your scanners able to pick up, Jeff? I can't remember. Sorry. Uh, um, for the fool's gambit, I mean, they're just, they're standard scanners. Okay. They're, they're long range scanners. You are detecting life signs aboard the vessel. However, they are weak. 
The vessel seems to be composed of, you know, your standard starship um, equipment, nothing anomalous or out of the ordinary. Um, you can tell by your scan that also that the um, the thing seems to be, or at least is on the verge of being fully functional. It is just stopped and largely mm. put on. Um, if a starship can be put on standby mode, it has been. Uh, but it has also been here a long time. You can see it has suffered multiple impacts from um, being hit by flotsam and jetsam that is in the drift here. Uh, you can see that it's, it's developed um, some actual like um, vertigree on the side from like clumps of earth that have collided with it and stuck. Like the ship has literal growth on the outside of it. Does it have a functional power core? It does. How about a functional drift engine? It does as well. Okay. Everything seems to be um, suboptimal, but functional. Um, checking stuff out, does it seem to have any weaponry? That one does not have. Okay. Would there be a place to dock, or would we have to, like, dock it against has, it? It seems to have a standard space dock that you could probably back up to with no, or get it, get up to no with no problem. Um, you're guessing you'll have to do the full docking procedure yourself, as you none of the um, your hails seem to be registering anything. Okay. Probably a ship full of tribbles. <laughs> Trills. How many life signs are we reading? You are reading. Let's see. Well, let's see how many survivors we have. Sixteen. And how many could we take on board uh, the Fool's Gambit? I mean, all of them. I mean, you have plenty of room okay. <laughs> for sixteen standard humanoids. Yeah. Can we tell anything about them other than, like, humanoid-ish? Or what can we weak. tell about the life signs? The, the life signs are incredibly weak. It's difficult to even ascertain what they are. You're guessing that they may be even be in stasis. Oh. How about the actual ship style? Does it um, correspond to anything that we might have in record? Uh, give me a computer's check for me. Okay. Could I do a culture check to see? Culture, yeah, would do what would do you as well. What uh? What species this uh-huh. might be? Oh, uh, natural one. Natural one. Okay. Uh, nothing's coming to mind. You can't really th- we, seeing it like just just because of the state of it, it's difficult to tell what where it probably came from. What'd you get, Jeff? Twenty five. Twenty five. Uh, your record. Computers, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your records sh- after a brief check show that um. This is an inc- incredibly older style ship, probably one of the very first minted um, for long-term drift travel. Uh, it is basically a military, an old-style military um, troop transport. Okay. From um, what would be the national background or the planetary background? Oh, shit, I forgot. I got an 18 on the culture check, if that helps with that aspect of things. Let's see. This is a um, packed world's ship. Uh, it is an old style um, aposte ship. Okay. Which is the drow. Another drow ship. I'm seeing one of two options currently we've either got an alien style ship or we have an event horizon style ship those are both bad (laughs) yeah you don't find abandoned spaceships in the in the the drift with uh good stories attached to them true that oh this is like uh sunshine of the spotless mind 
Ow. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good story either. Damn. Uh, the Notebook. I don't fucking know. What's a good story? <laughs> At any rate, what, yeah. all right, what are you guys doing? I uh, initiate docking procedures. All right. You initiate docking procedures. Um, after initiating docking procedures, the, um, the ship uh, grudgingly brings on online those kind of uh, systems. You basically have to kind of force the dock open with your own uh, docking rig. and ev- But eventually, though, the seal is made, and you are docked to the vessel. Suits up, everyone. We're not sure what the uh, atmosphere is in here. Hmm. Ooh, should I disable my morphic skin and look drow? I will. All right. Just in case there are any non-stasis survivors. Oh, Pandora. This could also be a Pandorum situation. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why we're going in with guns. It's going to so, be a but, Star Trek situation. There's just Earl Grey in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ass- I'm assuming that this is, this is the military vessel. That the survivors that are on it are either, the, especially since it's drow, most likely drow involved, they're long lived, and if they've been kind of using stasis, then if this was a former military vessel, then they're going to be anti social, most likely. We shall so, see. Who's going in? That's why I'm looking like a drow, just to be safe. And I'm, I'm right. going in, definitely. You're looking look in. Like a lizard. Definitely um, set up um, parameters to prevent any kind of counter um, programming to, to our computers from All the right. con- contact. All right, you lock them out. Got it. Yep. Whenever you get to the airlock and um, everyone who is going, I assume it's to the whole away team here. Uh, <laughs> the whole uh, team is the away team. There's four yeah. of us. <laughs> well, well, there's the whole, and, all four of your team. Actually, we and just need to Marcus. stay back and take a nap. <laughs> well, we also have Andy and Marcus. They'll hold down the fort. No, Weepskeep looks at her clock and goes, ah, I'm supposed to live stream in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, you have the con. <laughs> Andy, you have the con. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to check the um, the airlock for traps, see if they booby trapped anything. All right. I got a roll for that. 29. You see no manufactured traps nor natural. Um, the, 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 the airlock seems to be in good working order and not sabotaged in any way. And, uh, do we have to force it open or? Oh, no. It'll work for you. Okay. <clears throat> the, do- the door opens, uh, releasing you into the vessel. Uh, the air inside the vessel is stale and thin, according to your readings. I'll do a dramatic barrel roll through the door. Well, just let me let me say this real quick. Um, <sighs> since it's been a full... Okay, we're still in the drift right now. Correct. So the seven days haven't gone by yet. No, so we should still be affected by the life bubble that I um, cast on us. All right. Well, two days. Yeah, it's been two days. Yeah, and you have seven days for that. Yeah, right? or six days. All righty, cool. But like I said, I'm just talking about what your your uh, comms are reading. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the air is thin and uh, basically um, stale. Ooh, it's got a lot of like atmospheric pollutants just from like general. Um, molecular decay that, that goes on. Essentially, it's dusty and it's rusty and it's a piece of shit inside. Um, as you enter, you can see this place is basically outfitted um, very spartanly, like many, uh, many a military vessel. 
and you also see a number, a great number of bones on the floor near in the halls, in the first hall that you exit into. Could I do a life science to see if they're humanoid or animal? Uh, no life science needed for you. Um, they are about split. They're split about one to, on a one to five basis, drow and orc. Like mostly orcs? Mostly orcs. It seems that there may have been an orc raiding party. Um, just so... <laughs> there's also the other option. Um, <laughs> on your home world, orcs are not exactly uh, high up members of society. Ah. Uh, they are so prisoners with jobs, mostly. <laughs> so these may have been the crew. Yeah, may have been the crew, yes. Are there any um, uniforms or clothing or material around the bones, or are they uh, like just bare bones? Uh, the, the corpses here are basically desiccated uh, to the point where... I call them bones, but basically they are corpses with skin stretched tightly across them. Mm. There are uniforms intact. Uh, you don't recognize the insignia. You're guessing it might be uh, either a defunct mercenary house or some other private military. Mm. Too old for my recollection or too niche. Mm. I know you said that there was a bunch of um like rust and different things in here. When um when we look at this actual structure of the vessel, is it actually able to still be used as a ship or is it just like they're scared to actually enable the drives because that might the ship might disintegrate from actual usage? Um you move forward and you're you move forward through the ship and you find the um, the bridge pretty easily from there. The layout is simple, easy to grasp for soldiers. And uh, <laughs> the once you get there, you find the um, the computers are largely offline. They still have power, so you probably need an engineer to get some power to them and so you can like double check those systems up. Well, you two do this, I will check the rest. I'll clear the rest of the ship for anything living. Would you want to separate? Just the nearby areas. I'll, I'll cover our six, basically, while y'all are doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll stay with these two. You go ahead and do that. I'll activate my cloaking field and I'll scout the nearest area you scout the nearest area this nearest area is the um it looks like it is the mess <laughs> you basically head down to head down the hall from the bridge where you could find um, a, a pretty large area designed for uh crew to take their take their sustenance uh you see a few um monitors uh, embedded in the walls that are uh, f flickering with uh, power, but nothing actually on them. It just, they just occasionally just flick uh, purple and red lights on occasion. The food here looks, uh, or rather the state of the place is a mess. And most of the tables are overturned. There are, of course, uh, dishes and utensils everywhere. Um, any food that would have that might have been here is gone, or has gone bad, or gone so dry, stuck to its its uh its platters or plates that it is basically just dirt at this point. Any evidence of violent death? Uh, you f you see a few more corpses, and now that you can now that you're investigating for them, you check them out you see the yes um there are four orc corpses and one drow corpse they are ripped open in various portions um most of them like 
neck to belly, some of them straight across the neck. Uh, a lot of them have multiple gash wounds in their dry, ragged husks. Falling back, letting them know that there is potentially a violent entity on the ship. Meanwhile. Mm. Meanwhile, back on the deck, uh, Tucker. I mean, he did that through the comms or something violent, possibly on the ship. Yeah. Yeah. I'm coming back. There's potential violent, a violent entity on the ship. Too late. I'm locking the doors. Good luck out there. (laughs) Several damaged corpses. There's, there's, uh, hmm. Trying to think what I could do to set up for some unknown entity. Um, I, I, can you fix you... the computer so we can use the computers? He said you needed the engineering check. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, Who's anyway. not listening now, fucko? I was looking through my spells. Uh, <laughs> 23? Huh? 23? Okay, engineering. yes. Um, you dip out of the consoles and begin working on them. Uh, you see that you, you've... <laughs> The weak, the engines are pretty weak. Like they've been basically. Oh, uh, and it's uh, the DC's less. If I'm fixed, hold on. I got a. I think it's the first time this has come up for me. Oh. Um, where's that at on here? Class oh, feature sure. traits and benefits. I think theme. Yes. Yeah, so, vaster set or theme knowledge uh, reduce the DC of engine checks to repair items by five. Okay. Um, then yeah, you wait, what was your role? 23. Oh yeah. Then you definitely are able to basically from your position in the, uh, at the engineering station on the bridge, you basically are able to bring the ship back up to at least minimum operating power. You know, you're probably not gonna get a lot of speed out of it. And, but eventually all the, um, the air cyclers, the, the ship's lights, um, and um, all the other uh, power units begin to liven up, including the computer systems. Okay. Mm. Well, then I will cast Identify to give me admin access, give me the password, okay. and then I'll, I will use computers to try to get into the system. Okay. So this would be a, a plus 10. Okay. <clears throat> so... I rolled a 15, so plus 27. 27? Okay. You... 42? Uh, Yeah, 42. Okay. (laughs) You are able to quickly ascertain that there are um, 16 still remaining life signs in the vessels. There is a bay where there are... um, stasis pods and you see that they the it gives you basically the full rundown of everyone in the stasis pods everyone in the stasis pods are listed as uh siege warriors hmm. in the drought tongue and once you bring the computer to life the um a voice in elven f- basically fires up Uh, you, is it here to speak drow besides the drow? It's called Aklo, isn't it? Yeah, it's Aklo. Yes, I do. Okay. Then Aklo, uh, the uh, the computer fires off in Aklo. Welcome, Captain. Have we arrived at our destination? Um, No. Last last coordinates input were indistinct. Still in the drift. See what their actual coordinates um, destination was. It looks to be uh, one of the packed worlds that I cannot name because I don't know. Uh, basically, it looks like a uh, a mission to reinforce some sort of army. In a war that you know has to be long over, given the time stamps involved, at least a hundred years. See if I can find out what the mission parameters are here, and like if there's any fail safes that will trigger 
like depending upon like current crew status or status of the vessel like anything that'll trigger things like if we can't complete our mission this so quote unquote something else would trigger um you begin checking for that and you see that there is in fact a um a a number of um bio scanners uh set along the ship generally amongst the the um the command quarters that fire off whenever uh someone not part of the command crew goes through okay can i change the command um basically what the parameters are of who the command crew would be but by inputting like our genetic code and our basically our readings in there so that we would not technically trigger anything when we go through uh basically substitute you can um it would take another check for me though okay and um i and a medicine check okay medicine first yes please okay i've got a theory about this violent uh entity it is possible that the orcs killed the drow to eat them and then later died of starvation that is just your drow racism talking (laughs) (laughs) okay possible Medical check, 17 plus 15. All right. 30, uh, 32, yeah. Okay, yeah. You you easily are able to substitute um, the biometric data that you have just from general scans from your own crew into the ship's computers as a substitution or as additional command crew. Excuse me, not substitute. Yeah. Uh, opening, opening the way for any any location in the vessel without setting off uh, alarms. Uh, back to my uh, my stupid theory. Which of the bodies did all of the bodies have these gouges and slashes and punctures? Correct. Mm. It's hard to tell uh, like in the dim light the, the sh- well not dim light for you but everyone else here the light is basically like any lights being emanated are either red or purple, basically keeping everything in mostly darkness unless you have dark vision or low light. Um, this is just the standard color palette for drow military vessels. <laughs> Makes sense. Now that the computers are up, can we look to see if there are any um, aberrant biological readings? Uh, that I was about to get to before Jeff asked me some questions, but uh, the 16 remaining life signs in stasis you see um, are are listed as siege troopers. But if you can make me a life science check, you can figure out what they are from just general readings. 25 life science. Oh, you have life science? All right. Mm-hmm. Oh, were you not uh, asking me? I'm sorry. No, I was asking whoever wants to do it. <laughs> yeah, I can. I, I got a 24 on it. All right. The both will get it. Um, there are 16 trolls in mm. stasis. Release. <laughs> <laughs> Purge. <laughs> military trained, or at least partially military trained trolls. Holy shit. Is there a, like an acid bath uh, emergency lever to pull? You see that there is stasis. And we can play them the, the subtle manif- tones of acid bath the band. <laughs> you can tell from the crew manifest, however, that they were originally twenty, which means four either got out or released by someone on board, causing well a lot of havoc. Clearly. But we're so, only reading 16 life signs and they're all in stasis pods. They are all in stasis pods and they are all trolls. So the um, all the uh, damage and destruction to the corpses, does that reflect maybe a troll attack being done on them? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And like it was particularly dangerous troll, I imagine. Yeah. From what was said, is there a like a function to like 
purged a vessel just in case something like that happened where like it would it would shoot all, all the life pods out into space <laughs> sure let's just seed the drift with <laughs> cryostasis military trolls <laughs> I would assume I mean come on this is drow so it looks like to you from the way things are set up these stasis pods are also drop pods basically these mm. are troops ready to ready to launch so you fly <laughs> over a planet you drop them down behind enemy lines and let them wreak havoc yes I say we just go maybe blow this ship up well okay we should be able to actually still search the ship. Of course. Um, but um, so we should not trigger anything with our bio signs now. So everything's going to be so old and obsolete. Well, there was, okay, so there were 16 life forms, right? And those are in stasis. Mm-hmm. Is that including the one that you warned us about? No, that's what I was wondering. Were there any life signs not in stasis that we can no. read? Is there a way to program the computer to scan for like undead or uh, constructs or something that's the, that wouldn't have a life sign but would maybe be animated uh, movement you probably, yeah you probably want to scan for movement okay oh, alright so who's going to bring out the EFM readers that's the, the big the big chonky fucking the big, the big chonky uh Aliens, because you mentioned that earlier, the big the heartbeat sensor. Yeah, it looks like a toaster with a handlebar on it. <laughs> Actually, I got I got a spell called Extra Sense that will let me um kind of work like that. It gives me um like blind sight, but I can also do um let's see the second level version of this. There's one version that's almost like a just like blind sense, and then there's another version that's more like blind sight, lets me do like echolocation. Okay. Okay. So let me pull that up. So I... Is there anything we can do with the computers to change the scanning to look for ghosts or ghouls or goblins or? whatnots. Um, give me a... Hmm. I guess just give me an intelligence check, maybe? I've got that. <laughs> 17. 17. You might want to check these ships um, log. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, they might have recorded everything that went down. I'll do that. I'll... I'll plop down in the seat and pull up the ship's log. All right. You pull up the ship log. Everybody is basically on the same uh, admin privileges <laughs> since Jeff plugged them in. And um, you can see that the, the ship's logs uh, are basically up to the minute, uh, up up until about 10 years ago. Uh, then it says data storage full. Uh, for for the various recording uh, devices up, up, up on the vessel. I'm going 20-year um, increments. Check to see if All right. or 40-year uh, <laughs> increments. You, you back it up. Uh, first, you, you start simple. Backing it up five years. Everything on the, the screens that you bring up on the master... Um, View view screen, uh, all the same images of the vessel in, on all of the um, internal monitors. You can see that there is basically halls of dead troops, empty halls, things like that. You back it up further, ten years, the same. Twenty years, the same. Forty years, the same. Eighty years, the same. Finally, you you you. Dip it on way, way back to 125 years ago. And you see basically 
you basically pop in on uh, a scene of orcish and drow crew running all over the vessel uh, in, in a panic. You see like the, the bright flashes of um, of of uh, fi- of gunfire. Here we are. Uh, okay, you, you basically you basically you have to tri- you have to back it up a long time to get back to the um the thing that the last thing that happened here for everyone died. You back it up a little bit more so things look a little bit peaceful, and then you begin scanning the screens, make a perception check. 31. You begin watching all the various camera feeds on a, on a big, wide, multi-screen thing on the bridge there, checking it out as you go, and then you finally you, be, you detect some movement in the cargo hold. As some random crate basically bursts open, revealing a... Hold on. Let me see what... Uh, let me get to my stats here. Ah, come on. I hate this. There you go. You basically are... You basically reveal a large um, creature that uh, bursts out of this fully steel crate that it has been transported in. It looks like a mishmash of flesh and cybernetics Ooh. that begins looking around the room and then begins stalking from room to room, immediately killing two orcish, um, orcish troops with, <laughs> with its own wep- integrated weapons which appear to be a uh, pulse gauntlet. And um, as it begins moving through various decks of the ship, killing various orcish crew members, it finally gets to the stasis pods where it begins to, um, it, it launches a drone, which connects to the stasis, like four of the stasis pods, opening them up. And then it stands stock still as uh, four orcs tumble out, or four trolls tumble out. Two-headed trolls. Uh, you can make a life life science check for me if you want. I'll assist anybody else that's going to do that. I mean, I'm all right in it. I'm not. I'm not going to assist. <laughs> not when I roll a one. I can't even yeah. assist. I, I can do it. Okay. I'll attempt to assist. Uh, what do you have to get to assist? <laughs> I rolled a, I rolled a fifteen plus fifteen, so thirty. Thirty. Uh, these are quantum trolls. They are basically <laughs> trolls that have been experimented on for military purposes. They have two heads. Um, they have multiple regeneration types. They um. They exist in several possible quantum states at once and threaten squares of thirty up to thirty feet. That's just that's just me giving you some hints about how dangerous they can be. Basically, they are trolls, two hundred trolls that are out of step with reality and making them especially effective combatants. And they basically look around. They smell the uh, the creature that let them out. And when they detect no life to it, they begin to turn on their masters, running through the ship, basically uh, clawing and devouring whatever crew members they can find. This takes about an hour or two. Uh, You just watch, uh, I assume, on fast forward as they Mm -hmm. move through the ship, ripping people apart. Eventually, the captain locks everything down, locks himself, and then runs to his quarters. But when he gets there, one of the trolls phases into reality next to him and bites his head off on the camera, then disappears. You phase forward another couple of months and the trolls begin to devour each other until there's one left, which eventually, after gnawing on uh, dried body parts and things like that, uh, looks out into the stars, steps out of the airlock and disappears off the cameras. 
But what you see still on the camera this whole time in the shadows as dust and debris collects on it is this one strange, large, cybernetic creature that that gives off no life signs. Looking through the cargo manifest, what technically would have been that um, container? What supposedly was contained in within that container? Missiles. Okay. Well, we know that wasn't missiles. Well... <laughs> a meat missile. This is a meat missile. <laughs> a very slow moving meat missile. That was my stage name in college. <laughs> um, Geist, give me a culture check. Okay. Culture 13. Um, Giving how it's your culture, I'm going to let it go. Uh, <laughs> You realize that what you're looking at here was probably some other mercenary clan sabotaging this mission in order to steal a contract. And I will explain that and how the, this is um, standard practice in a lot of freelance organizations. They will undercut their competitors literally um, by murdering them. So we could either search the ship and have to deal with that uh, cyber golem. Because uh, there's no airlock. Uh, and by the way, you picked that out correctly. It is a cybernetic golem. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's what it sounds like. No life signs, meat, and metal. Um, we could launch these trolls out and... Um, Hopefully, the vacuum will also pull the cybernetic golem with it or bombard the ship from our ship. Well, I mean, we well, I don't want to blow this ship up because it was so. All right, the one box with missiles in it happened to have a cybernetic golem in it. But what about the other boxes? Agreed. Mm. So, uh, could we launch? According to the manifest, uh, it's mostly other munitions and things like that. Could we launch the trolls to some, uh, like, looking in drift space, is there anywhere this could be targetable that we could send them to? In drift space, um, there aren't any really <laughs> habitable spaces in drift space, except for, like, the very few people. Or... I didn't care about habitable. Yeah, are there oh, any okay. asteroids what? we can point them at? In that case, yes, there's plenty of places you can dump them. <laughs> I just figured we'd have to give some kind of location to target the actual pods. Um, you're guessing once you get on your vessel, finding a large enough space to, to shoot the pods at as an actual target would be pretty easy. Okay. So if we shot them, would that cause any disruption to this vessel itself? Would it like cause any dis um, to destroy the vessel by sending them out? Just I'm make assuming the payload not. lighter. Making the payload lighter does not mess mess with mess with this vessel at all. Okay. Would that expose that room to vacuum at all? Um, no, it is basically. Um, well, actually, it would, but only briefly. Like basically, it mm -hmm. unseals, fires out, then repressurizes. So we can't hope that the cybernetic golem goes out with it. Well, we're much better off as long as we don't have, I, I, in my opinion, get the trolls out of here, then we can actually spend more time looking at this vessel. Well, we still got the the golem to deal with, too. Oh, well, I know, but what I'm saying, at least we don't have the golem and 16 trolls. Now, as soon as it determines life signs, it might start opening those up. Yes. Uh, well, what if we just let them loose and see if they deal with the cybernetic golem? <laughs> they didn't, they didn't they, on the, yeah. initially, they don't pick up any life signs from it. The trolls? Yeah. Yeah. When he yeah, let the first oh, initial yeah. four out, they just ignored it. Mm. Yeah, well, then they're useless. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're useful for murder. Yeah. In this situation, they're a liability. I, I tell you what. Um, so, we have a general <laughs> idea where the... um. Um, 
writer is from, correct? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. I'm gonna, let's just kind of shoot them in that direction. Try to do my best pinpoint targeting to just have them <laughs> drift through space <laughs> that direction. Just I mean, launch them into the press <laughs> west in our space. <laughs> You know, there's a, guy, a, there's a guy I don't like that lives to the west somewhere. I'm just going to fire a bullet in that direction of the sky and hope for the best. <laughs> now, it, let, let me get this right. You're trying to get the ship to exit drift in Presleisk in our space over no. a major population center? No. Okay. All right. I was just asking that. No. Uh, <laughs> we just want to launch these trolls out at yes. asteroids or whatever that's near us that can okay. pre- prevent them from fighting us with the golem. So how long while they're in suspension, like once they get launched, would they come out of suspended animation? Uh, basically, once they uh, make landfall. So I'm gonna make their landfall as long away as far away from here as possible. Okay. I mean, technically, you can just fire them off into drift, and they might never make landfall. Essentially, that's what I'm gonna end up trying to do. Okay. Is. Horrifying. That's horrifying to do that to a sentient being. <laughs> Are they though? But they're I mean, suspended, so until they're not. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, as soon as you go to sleep, Jeff, you're basically just not human anymore. It's, 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 <laughs> That's why I murder only sleeping people because it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't count. He's sleeping. <laughs> 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 that whole, ba- that whole college humor Batman thing where he yeah. doesn't kill people. <laughs> Look at this little fella. He's all tuckered out. Tuckered out. Kill him. There's a batarang in his neck. He's sleeping hard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If, every, if, if everybody's in agreement, we're going to launch these fuckers. All right. You find what you consider a clear portion of the drift? Punch in those coordinates in quotations and fire all 16 of the pods out to uh, break whatever seeds they happen to land on whenever <laughs> they happen to land on it in the drift um, you can feel the sh- the ship shudder as the, um, the launch pods are discharged and then you can feel your ears uh, or no you can't you're wearing space suits never mind I'm oh, sorry <laughs> Keep an eye on that room, though, to see if that uh, golem stirs at all. All right. Yeah, you, you switch the camera to the live feed during all this, and you can see the pods basically, like, you see all the debris and, and detritus in the... Um, That's twice in the episode. Gets, gets mm-hmm. sucked out as the uh, the launch pods are launched forcefully out of the, the stasis bay. Um, and then you can see everything settle back down as gravity and atmosphere reasserts itself, but still you see it just sitting there, the, uh, the cybernetic golem. After the atmosphere reasserts itself, you see its head begins to move back and forth, and then it begins to march slowly forward. Make sure I lock out the system so it can't interface with the system as much as possible. All right. Um, Make a make a what is it? What is it? The check for I guess this is um, what do you call it? Science mysticism, mysticism, probably. Yeah, that's for this one. I can do a little misty. Uh, I would take mysticism or uh, physical science. I don't have much for physical science, but I can roll it. I I got a go ahead. Uh, 22 mysticism. I got it the exact same thing. Stop All trying right. to do that. That's the same thing here, actually. Okay. <laughs> if that <laughs> fails, I just realized I have an ability that lets me re roll once per day. You Whoa. are guessing that the drone it launched uh, on its initial sabotage mission was probably something remotely operated. Cybernetic golems are like most golems in that they can take orders, but they don't really think for themselves and have a lot of creativity. So anything it was programmed to do has probably already been discharged. Now it is basically just on a general order to finish off any remainders. Oh, I miss Goalie. 
Oh, yeah. oh, I thought his name was Handy. No, no. no Mine goalie. was Handy. Mine was Goalie. <laughs> we had both. Goalie. I still think we should have put a bowler on top of Handy and called him Handjob. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Um. All right. So yes, you know that the golem is marching toward through the ship towards, um, the bridge. Mm, can we lock down these doors to buy us some time? You can if you would like to try. Go ahead. I would rather us fight them in the. You said you were in. Um, what was the other room attached to this? The uh, the, the mess. mess. I'd much rather us fight them in the mess than try to hear fight them here on the command bridge. Yeah. All right. All right. Here's hoping that he doesn't just go to the bridge and smash everything up. I mean, he's going to have to pass us to get to the bridge. Correct. Yeah, it is all just a straight shot, isn't it? Yep. Okay, yeah, then we'll go to the mess and lock those doors down. Yeah. Buy us some time to shoot through some holes and whatnot. Uh, While you guys are getting prepared, you can uh, basically hear the thing stomping through the vessel like it's heavy footfalls echo across the rough metal floors, the elderly uh, troop transport. It's coming up from a lower level to where the drop, the drop slash stasis pods were. Um, looking for life signs. There has been movement, there has been activity, and it has basically been activated in order to finish off any remainders aboard the vessel. You guys move into the mess. Uh, are you setting up any barricades or anything like that? any um so first of all with our scans earlier or our knowledge checks do we know any weaknesses or um defenses or offensive capabilities that this thing might have uh it has um a weak damage reduction against uh adamantine or wounding weapons it has Mm -hmm. standard construct immunities of course and which include various magical immunities um, what was your check on on life science in the sky? Uh, I know we all got a 22 on mysticism. Right. Fra- Frakes was it 25, something like that? Yeah, it was pretty high. It went 25. It went... Hang on, is there I a way remember to check a 30 that? or something like that. Or was that somebody else? Yeah, 38. No. <laughs> it was either 30 or 32. No, that, that was, was Jeff's check. The one I wish that I, I could see. Yeah, I'd done a 30. Yeah, were. okay. I, I want to say it was like 21. All right. Um, you know that it's weak against discharge spells. Uh, it is weak against um, spells that deal cold damage, uh, which counters. You know that it has uh, cybernetic golems have an integrated haste circuit. However, you know that it is, it is uh, uh, inadvisable to use electricity effects on it. What about fire or sonic? Uh, those seem to be perfectly fine, but electricity effects will rejuvenate it and, and re- reactivate its haste. <laughs> okay, and I will say all of this. Cold, I am, believe cold would dampen its haste. Is that correct? It, it's weak to cold and discharge weapons but uh, electricity will rejuvenate it. If this is anything like the golems that my people have. Or discharge and greater discharge the spells. Uh, I know your mm-hmm. character is probably not very magic savvy, but. Yeah, also, this is I don't think I have heard. access to any of that anyway. All right. Well, I think those are tech- technomancer spells anyway. Oh. So it's not immune to magic, like. It is immune to most magic, but like oh. most golems, it has specific effects that will either hinder it or hate it. Hate if it, it has, um, it's probably got anything that's SR spell yeah, anything resistance. That ha- anything that has spell resistance, it is immune to, basically. Gotcha. Other than the, the things I have listed. Yeah. Um, given your check, you also know that it can grant itself X-ray vision. Hmm. And, and like like any golem, it can go berserk once you get it past uh, 
half hit points. All right. <laughs> we saw that it, it had an integrated pulse gauntlet. Any ranged weaponry on it? Uh, yeah, given your given your uh, your your brief overview of its its march to the launch pod area, it seems to have artillery lasers mounted as well. Mm. All that information is shared with everyone. All right. Are we barricading these doors, or are we just gonna shoot it while it comes up? I mean, if if barricading the door, it's eventually going to get through the door. Mm-hmm. We wanted right. to know the door's in here. The door can slow it down, which would allow us to take some shots at it, maybe before it can fully get into the room, just to slow right. it down. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. You guys lock out the doors and set set up for its um. Move some tables in front of it to slow it down. All right. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to um, cast Defrex Hardness on me. Hardy Was that out of curious? curious it um, gives me um. DR slash equal to my caster level. Gotcha. It also helps with ED. An erectile dysfunction? <laughs> the Frex hardness. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys wait in the um, the shattered remnants of the mess hall after locking the door and setting up little barricades for your weapons, for your, um, your, your shooting, your shooting. And finally, you you guys hear uh, the the booming thunderous sound of fists slamming into the lockdown door on the far side of the room. A a passage that leads to the lower decks and straight to the mess hall. Um, you see the door begin to deform, and bow uh, out. Uh, towards towards you, uh, in uh, obvious fist-shaped fucking protrusions, and then finally, with a screech of metal, an arm bursts through. I'll let you guys get a, a an attack with a twenty percent miss chance if you want to give take an attack. Yeah, oh, that's a very na- narrow shot. Or fifty percent miss chance. Excuse me. 20% next round. <laughs> right, so that's 24. Uh, 50% this chance is 61. That is a that is a hit. Oh, excuse me. Wait, never mind. Both are yeah, it's a hit. Sorry. And I do eight damage, sonic damage. All right. Um, let's see. You blast the creature, and I... Oh, shit. There it is. Sorry, it's been a couple sessions since I've had to take, like, do combat notes. Uh, Mm. A couple? Anybody else shooting, or are y'all waiting? I was trying... I've got... I was trying to... I've got this spell called Prescience. uh, Or Prescience. Prescience. Just Prescience. (laughs) 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 Uh, it doesn't allow for SR, so I know it, it would work, but a lot of it is like hinder the target's ranged weapon. I don't think he has one. He does, uh, didn't we just? He yeah, does, he actually uh, has artillery lasers. Yes, yeah, Corona artillery lasers. Uh, Golem. Let's see. He takes. All right. Uh, yeah. Your weapon does a little bit of damage. Anybody else taking a pot shot this round? Oh, we will also. Okay, fire. Or. Oh. Uh, that's a 30 to hit, and then I have to roll percentiles. percentiles. What am I looking for? I got a 36. You're looking for a 50, 51 up. So that is a miss, unfortunately. I'm going to take a shot. Roll to 12 plus 11. Twenty-three. Uh, that will hit. Okay. Let you... me do my percent. Let me do yep. my percentile. Eighty-three. That is it. Nice. Okay. Two d six plus seven. Let's see. And how okay. far away are we shooting at this thing? Um. F- let's see. Range of the fifty feet. 
Okay. Like, I feel like Weep Skeep would probably be a bit closer. Okay. Like, yeah, we're waiting for it to come in here, but gotcha. I do most of my damage with my hands. 14 points of damage. 25. 14 points of damage. Um, let's Ooh. see. Force damage, technically. And gotcha. that versus your EAC. Okay. Um. And you, Valgorth, what are you doing? I cast uh, Prescience on him. Uh, when he, when I, as soon as I see him, I open up multiple realities around the form of the golem so that I can see different reactions and actions he might take. It's okay. a spell I have to concentrate on, and I okay. use reactions uh, to make things happen so he doesn't get a save until I declare uh, a reaction. But I have right. to concentrate on this spell to make it work. Okay. Um, the golem continues to pound on the door, revealing more of himself as he begins to burst through, but... Um, so I'll give everybody a secondary since you made preparations chance to hit him uh, with a 20% mischance. chance. Let's start uh, with the t- yeah, let's uh, start with Weep Skeep. Go ahead. 19. Uh, and that EAC? Uh, yes. That will hit. Lovely. Roll your 20% chance, please. You're looking for a 21 up. Um... Dang it, 16. Oh, two misses. That sucks. Boo. All right. Guys, what are you doing? Uh, 23 to hit and then a 35. All right, that will hit. You would think. I'm going to stow my weapon in disgust. <laughs> Time to punch, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and I do minimum damage of four. All right. Uh, your, your weapon bounces off him, basically. Uh, Valgorth. I continue concentrating on the spell. Essex. All right. 15 plus 11, 26 to hit. Mm-hmm. Now let me do percentiles. Yeah, 21 up. Uh, a nine. <laughs> Gosh, all right. So, yes, your weapon, your misses it. Anyway, he burst through. Let's roll initiative for real. Can I use a reaction as he burst through? Sure, go ahead. Uh, give me a reflex save. Reflex save it. Oh man, that's that's gonna suck. Um, give me a d twenty here. All right. Uh, that's not good. Sixteen. Uh, he trips as he comes through the door. He'll be prone at the start of the combat. All right, this uh. is to go. Um, falls forward through the, roof <laughs> of the door. Let's roll initiative. It's a twenty-five. Twenty-five. Uh, Geist. Uh, I believe that's also a 25. I skipped over. Yes, 25. Valgorth. Uh. Sorry. It's been a while since I've looked for this. Uh. Dexterity score? 14. 14. Essex? 13. I rolled a 3. 13. Uh, what is your dexterity bonus? Oh, dex bonus is plus six. All right, cool. So you will be first and the golem will be, you will be second to last. The golem got a 13 as well. <laughs> okay. By the way, uh, Toker, you but can So then still... the golem will be last, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. You can still I... shoot while you're concentrating. Can you? Yeah. I think so. This is the move action, right? Um, I thought... Uh... I thought it was more involved than that. It's not as bad as it used to be in um, Pathfinder. Oh. Well, Weepskeep's first, or Geist, whoever has the best initiative bonus. Weepskeep is closer. Okay, but just for curiosity, a plus eight? Uh, I believe that's you, actually. I think I've only got a seven. Yep. All right. It's you anyway. You guys are just, like, neck and neck. Okay, go ahead. Um... Are you going to use a a ranged or run up an attack? Oh, no, no. I have stole that weapon in disgust. Yes. Uh, I'm going to run up and punch him. All right. Does a 17 hit his EAC? Um, A 17 does not hit his EAC. However, I was going to tell you, um, you feel like like a a, a sudden burst of... um, energy from within you feel like 
uh, there is like a secondary like spirit within you, and you remember the seed that you took in yourself that 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 yearns for uh, glory in in warfare. Um, it it has now give, been given its first taste of that. So for the next four rounds, you have a plus two to attack and damage. Oh, so cool. that will that will grant you a nineteen and a hit. Booyakasha. Uh, that is going to be max of hmm. 23. 23, all right. Acid and bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, guys, you said he's prone right now? Correct. Mm-hmm. Poop. And we're 50 feet away? Uh, 50-ish, yeah. So I'll close half that distance as part of my trick attack. Um, I rolled a 24 to make him flat-footed. Uh, 24, let's see, 20 plus 8 is what you're looking for. 28 is the DC4. Okay, so I did not make him flat-footed. Uh, my pistol's a 21 to hit his EAC. It does. So this is just regular damage of six. All right. And I moved up, I closed half the distance so that. All right. right. Gotcha. Valgorth. So to get into the nuts and bolts a little bit, I don't, I think is I could keep, I could do anything I want while I'm concentrating on a spell. I don't see. Mm -hmm. Successfully cast a spell. You must concentrate the length of time. You must concentrate to cast a spell specified in the casting time entry in the spell's description. Your foes can interrupt your spell casting in a few ways as described below. So it's one round plus concentration. Concentration required to cast a spell is sufficient to cause you to briefly lower your defenses. If a foe threatens you, so if I want to keep concentrating on a spell and I'm within an attack of opportunity range, they can take attack of opportunity. If I take any damage, the spell goes away. There's right. no, there's no roll. Got if you. I take any damage at all, the spell stops. There's no roll. So I can still act normally while concentrating. I just, I don't think I can cast another spell though. I don't think you Probably can either. I thought you couldn't cast spell. another concentration spell. Am I wrong? Yeah. That's what I, don't I thought. Know. Anyway, that's that's fine. So I'm I'm gonna um I'm just gonna take shots at this guy. With your sniper doodad. On my sniper doodad. And continue <laughs> concentrating on that spell. All right. Uh, and I got a twenty six to hit him. Twenty six to hit him. That will definitely hit him. Oh wait. Do I want to use this gun? I think it does electricity damage, and we don't want to do that, right? No, 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 no. no. Mm-hmm. It's that, that not only heals him, but re energizes him. Oh, look at that. Is it electricity or just energy? The E? Um, I think E, e is electricity. It's electricity, yeah. Hmm. Then I will do uh, uh, one less roll, but I'll use my uh, blaster pistol. All right. Um, and he's fifth, but he's fifty feet away. Correct. Unless you want to move up. Yeah. Mm. Did anybody else move up already? I did. Yeah. And, and Geist. Yeah. Then I'll I'll move up. Uh, I'll move thirty feet closer, and then uh, twenty two to to blast with the the pistol. All right. And if that hits, that'll do seven bludgeoning damage. Word. Your weapon does a little bit of damage. Mostly here to debuff him at this point. And it is Dr. Essex's goo. Okay. With his better sniper rifle. I'm not going to use sniper rifle this round. I'm actually going to soul surge him. And because that gets no SR and no signal throw. Nice. And he gets uh does a twenty-two hit. Yes. Okay. And he takes thirty-five points of damage. Whoa. What does your soul search look like? Sixty-eight. Yeah. It's um 
It looks like six D eight. <laughs> just six it's, giant it's pier- D eight. Piercing force damage. It's basically I, I I suck out a piece of my soul and use that to. Uh, I'm I'm imagining like Dragon Ball Z where they kind of like, um, take yeah, draw into yeah. power and then they use it out to attack. It's like a the KO can. Yeah. Like this. Kamehameha. Gotcha. How much was that again? Sorry. Um, shit. 35. Yeah. Okay. That is a powerful hit. That All is right. piercing and force damage. Piercing and force? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, it is the golems go. You yeah. see a blur of motion as the creature stands from being prone. Reflex safe. As its haste begins to kick in. That time I got a 25. He is able to stand. All right. He stands up, uh, giving him the remainder of his actions to go. Weepskeep, you are the nearest person to him. Mm-hmm. And he takes a pulse gauntlet to swing at your face. I got an... Uh, oh, golly. I got a... Uh, Sorry, I got a 37 to hit you. Oh, that doesn't hit. Damn. 37 doesn't hit. You, I'm just full of shit. You laugh. Of course it hits me. <laughs> I'm of just full of shit. <laughs> um, the, the golem slams you for 21 damage. All right. And I rolled really low as a, as a word of warning. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Um, we're at the top of the round. Weeps, keep it as your go. Uh, you just please. got hit. She likes that. I know. That, that was, was a plus, plus what to my damage? Plus two? Plus two. For okay. three more rounds now? Mm-hmm. Alrighty then. So that is plus a... Plus two to attacks and damage as, as the seed oh. gives you power. All right, so I'm going to do two attacks in that case. Okay. Um, ooh, the second one is a natural 20, and the first one yeah. is a 30. All right, total. both will hit. All right. So um, the first damage is, ooh, that's uh, 14. 14, all right. And then... The second one, I know that I double all of that and that I add the corrosive damage. Okay, so so 41 total. What? Okay. <laughs> Golly. Um, Wait, man. is that enough? That's not enough. It's actually 51. My bad. <laughs> okay. Uh Let's do a little right. math here. Plus 22 plus 16 is 38. And then plus 13. 3, 35. Yeah, so we just does a right, one-two punch. punch. Weeps keep does a one-two punch, punch that... Basically, when you see it connect, it's almost like slow motion, how all the the cybernetic golem systems begin to crack and shatter. It begins to sputter and jerk. It is still standing, but it is so um, uh, damaged. It looks like it can hardly function. It is your go, Geist. I will attempt another trick attack as I move a little bit closer. 35, 36. To render him flat-footed. I will do it. And, uh... A natural two. A natural two for an 11 to hit his flat-footed. It does not. Didn't think so. All right. Uh, Valgorth. Um... I reach out to alternate realities and grab one and pull it closer to weep. Um, to weep skeep. 
and you get a uh, plus five foot enhancement to your movement for two rounds, which you also recover 14 stamina. We yes. are. And that's my go. Ethics. We'll just take a pot shot. Okay. All right, let's do this. Um, an 18 hit. An 18 uh, will not yeah, hit. EAC. EAC. It will not hit his EAC. Okay. Um, and finally, the golem fires off a couple of desperate. What's he trying to do? Uh, attack Weepscape. Uh, give me a reflex save. Okay, let me get another die. There we go. That one was not good. 13. So uh, while I'm still looking at the multiple possibilities he has, I move Weepskeep over a little using the last of my prescient spell. Uh, he takes a minus four penalty to his next melee attack roll or a minus two penalty to his multiple melee attack roll if he does a full All attack. Right. Okay, it was a full attack, so... So whatever his full attack minuses would normally be, it's an additional minus two. All right, so let's see. So minus six on that. 20. I like this spell. Uh, does 24 get you, Weepskeep? It does. Damn it. All right, then both attacks still manage to hit. So I hate this hot. spell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible spell. Why would you even use this spell? Uh, it, it was a good it was a good gambit, but this thing has a ridiculously high attack roll. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Um, let's see. So one attack does 30 damage and the mm. second one does 21 27 damage right yeah and the third attack i forgot oh wait no he used haste last round he doesn't get used this round the haste circuit only kicks in once every round so uh, we're back to the top of the round weeps keep the creature uh. is sputtering sparking swinging at you wildly and connecting but still in a very poor state so Weep is going to spend two entropy points per attack. All right. And she's going to do two attacks. And let's see here. All right. So I'm pretty sure they're both going to hit. Um, the lowest one is a 25. Yeah, then definitely hit. <laughs> okay. So 22 for the first damage. All right. And I've got two more D6s. There's another. And this is Weep's arms must be huge for carrying us through this fight. And 20 <laughs> for the second damage. <laughs> Okay, uh, your first hit basically shatters the creature from the inside out. The second one basically serves just to destroy it utterly. Parts and flesh begin flying all around you, back down the stairs, through the doorway in which it came, and basically over your shoulder. Basically, you cause a, 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 a quick, rapidly evolving chain reaction within its multiple systems causing a little bit of an explosion as the creature flies apart around you due to your powerful blows. Um, it is a smoking husk of meat and metal as you turn around to face your crew. Triumphant. Yeah. Oh, let's not overlook the fact that I made it fall down. <laughs> you making it fall down is probably why I didn't have to dip into my health. Um... Oh, so you have no health damage? No, okay. I'm only at stamina. But like, I got 20 stamina left. Um, you can feel the seed uh, inside of you, like re rejo rejoicing, exultant. Its first combat was success. It is triumphant. Delicious. <laughs> and we got a pulse gauntlet and a haste circuit off this thing. Ah, uh, yeah, you can scavenge those bits off. It also has, uh, what do you call them? Um, corona artillery lasers, mm. which are pretty good. 
This is off the uh, the actual golem. golem. Mm-hmm. I'll look up his stats now that uh, <laughs> we fought him. I mean... Uh... Cybernetic golem? Yeah. Back to zero on the attribute points. It also has eight batteries uh, attached. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll just just sprinkle the batteries into our your stuff. your big bag of batteries that you guys. Mm-hmm. Need. We just Set take the batteries. batteries and ammo. As soon as we get back on the ship, we just hook them all up to chargers that are dispersed throughout the ship. Actually, the all batteries right. are ammo, right? Yeah. Yes. There are some guns that use archaic ammo. Well, well now that you just. Oh God! Sorry. You said a Corona, so that's considered a heavy weapon. Yes. And does two D eight fire damage. Yep. So I guess it's like laser, hundred twenty foot range. Yep. Trickle burn. And the LFD pulse gauntlets. That sounds like something we we might want, maybe. What the the haste, sir? No, the, <laughs> what they call pulse gauntlets. <laughs> Everybody wants the haste circuit. Yeah, the hay circuit would be a roll off, I think. Mm. The pulse gauntlets will do electricity damage on top of every other damage that you do. Mm. I believe. Can I turn it off? Uh, I so. see. They are B, they're B and SO. I forget what SO stands for on the weapon chart. Sonic. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, they're, they're bludgeoning and sonic. Oh, okay. So, hmm. I mean, if you're just trying to give them up and nobody else wants them, sure. I mean, they're off the whip. They're off the monster. Basically, it's get them, break them down, or sell them. It's up to you. But is this a thing that has to be like an armor upgrade? No, the this is actually just is. a what? Yeah, the haste circuit is. But the haste the circuit is an armor that? upgrade. The 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 pulse gauntlets are just weapons designed for melee. Okay. Because, yeah, like, uh, I feel like my armor only has one upgrade slot and it's used for the jump jets right now. Yeah, yep. These are like gloves you would use. Did you buy anything the other day? Like when you got you all your money? I just got a hat of disguise. Oh, okay. I don't know if you like bought new armor. Like you could buy armor with better, with more slots, upgrade mm-hmm, slots. But mm-hmm. I did. I've got an extra upgrade slot. <laughs> uh, hey, he says, Mister Hay Circuit. Hello. <laughs> well, I want to ask because the Hay Circuit for the Golem works different than the Hay Circuit for the armor upgrade. Is this something we need to remove from the Golem and then retrofit? Yeah, it's like for the Golem, it's. It works around, it doesn't work around, it works around, it doesn't work around. For the armor, it has 10 charges, and you swift action, turn it on, swift action, turn it off, and it lasts for 10 rounds, but it has to recharge each day. Yeah, the Golem's haste circuit, like like in the stats, only works once every other round. Right. So, Uh you know, I I will let it function like the standard haste circuit. You just scavenge it off this creature. Okay. Okay. So let's just say, like, we remove it from him and, like, because oh, of the magic of it, it it worked that way for him. But once we removed it, it works like a standard haste circuit. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I even like the idea of having to like tinker with it to get it to 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 work right for our armor because it's not like, you know, whatever. All right. Um, that's cool. Yeah, I I want it. Who doesn't okay. want it? Before yeah. you uh, before you yeah. guys like descend into argument about who wants the hate circuit, what are you guys doing with the rest of the? Intact, but um, pretty bad shape ship. Uh, it is sellable. It is like, sellable. You basically have acquired sca- a scrap. <laughs> well, we should be able to bring this with us, can't we? Um... Yeah, you can tether it to your vessel. I mean, it's is it is too big to dock, right, on our thing? Yeah, we couldn't actually just attach it to our ship and keep going. But the best thing to do is we could actually just drive it. Um, We could set it to the same coordinates and come out in space with where we were going to come out anyway. All right. That is doable. Uh, You punch in the coordinates and it basically slaves itself to your your ship's guidance systems. But of course, we're we're going to still search the ship for anything else is cool. Okay. Um, You find... 
<laughs> you find a lot of weapons that are uh, out of date and out of style and whatnot. Um, you find armor that is uh, experiencing extreme age and decay here from the uh, kind of like very oxygen rich atmosphere it's kept this place at. Uh, and basically you uh, find things that are slightly interesting but not interesting enough to for me to roll with it on camera <laughs> but mainly you come across a good number of cred sticks 11 uh, 2000 gold pieces worth amongst the troops various pockets 11 2 no, no, 2000, yeah, of 2000 credits, yeah, credits like just, just amongst the like the, the scavenged cred sticks you find. Mm-hmm. Um, Frakes, you noticed uh, some very familiar like patterns on the cybernetic golem that you defeated, and you don't necessarily see any actual markings but um the manufacture here seems very familiar to you of course there's no house insignias but you know that this definitely is an old prototype of your former corporate house there's no insignia but i know a barbaroi gargoyle uh, go golem when i see one correct so this might be the remnants of some old corporate intrigue so you may want to harvest the data off this ship and the golem itself for future investigation in the meantime you can continue your trip through the drift with no further issues um and finally um, emerge in the space of Vandal Star, Andy fires off some rapid uh, coordinates or rapid uh, signals across the system and basically tells any sentinels to stand down. They have two ships approaching. Mm. And eventually a Vandal Star robot vessel approaches you. The screen comes on, and you see nearby Zillion uh, appear on your view screen and says, Wonderful. Thank you, friends. It's so wonderful to see you again. Pick up a bottle of champagne, pop it with a banner mission accomplished behind us. (laughs) I'm afraid there have been some complications since you left. And next time, we'll pick up on those complications. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's why you never hang a mission accomplished banner ever. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks for playing, everybody. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, We're gonna roll off for this hay circuit. Yeah, you yeah, can do that. Too. I'm, I'm going to stay off of it because I'm, I want to grab the artillery laser Corona pit. Um, I want that too. Give it all to me. <laughs> can you use heavy? No, <laughs> but I want it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we want to record ourselves doing it? Or do y'all we y'all roll off. I'm just going to use a paradox. I got a nat 20 uh, at the start of the day. So I'm just going <laughs> to nat 20 for that paradox. Uh-huh. Sure. Actually, I, don't, a- I want the haste, but I think it would be better in y'all's hands because you can move and make a full attack. Well, we'll decide that next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. Check out our links for Patreon, uh, our very social media, and all that other bullshit. Good night. Good night, everybody. Roll off. <laughs>